Detective Explainer here. Today, I'm going to explain a drama film called The Only Living Boy in New York. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. For Thomas Webb, his friend, Mimi, is the only thing in his life that he settled on. Thomas is crazy for her, but unfortunately, she doesn't feel the same towards him. She only likes him as a friend, so when Mimi told him that she's going to Croatia, Thomas feels betrayed. He confesses his feelings for her, but this only ends in disappointment when Thomas learns that they're not on the same page. After having a little argument with Mimi, Thomas goes home. Along the way, he meets his new neighbor, W. F. Gerald. Gerald introduces himself to Thomas, and when he asks the young man what's troubling him, Thomas tells him he's having a bad day. Being a perceptive person, Gerald asks for the name of the girl he's having trouble with. Gerald continues to ask questions about her, making Thomas feel uneasy. He then asks Gerald if he's a psychiatrist, and while Gerald says he isn't, he believes that he could be of some help. Reluctant to keep answering, Thomas tells Gerald it was nice meeting him before going to his apartment. After a while, Thomas decides to just talk to Gerald and share his feelings about his friend. Thomas says that they get each other, but Mimi has a boyfriend already. He spent a night with Mimi once, but everything suddenly went platonic, leaving Thomas confused. In response, Gerald advises him to make Mimi afraid of not being with him by letting life take over. He says that Thomas has to find the right time before making his move, which Thomas finds a bit funny. Gerald wisely tells Thomas that everyone's life is just as random as it is deliberate and funny as it is tragic. For Thomas's unstable mother, Judith, throwing dinner parties is her way of self-medicating. She likes taking in artists who come to New York from different places since they distract her from her problems in drunken outbursts. As Thomas joins his mother's dinner party one night, his father, Ethan, talks about being a writer. Being a publisher, he observes that nobody reads fiction anymore, and that's why most novelists these days don't have enough money to support themselves. Ethan then tells them that if ever Thomas wants to be a writer, he'd talk him out of it. Ethan isn't sure why his son refuses to go to college since Thomas is just living on the Lower East Side without any direction, still unsure about his life. Thomas only looks at Ethan, sad that his father doesn't understand him. One night, Thomas and Mimi go to a jazz bar. As they talk about his new neighbor, Thomas notices his father arrive with a young woman. As they take their seat, Ethan gets intimate with the woman and kisses her. Thomas and Mimi later go back to Thomas's place, and they too talk about what they've just seen. Thomas wonders what will happen if his mother finds out about it, but Mimi assures him that it doesn't mean his father loves him any less. But Mimi quickly realizes that wasn't a good thing to say, so she apologizes for her comment, saying he knows his father doesn't care about him, but this time, this is about his mother. Mimi tries to comfort him, but Thomas still feels bad. As they stare at each other, Thomas tenderly kisses her, but Mimi asks him not to do that. Thomas tells her that he knows she wants it too, but Mimi replies that he's just confused. Thomas then retorts about how angry he is and how he can never get a woman as beautiful as the one with his dad, who's good-looking and has his own publishing house. Irritated, Mimi asks if he's going to use Ethan's affair as a confirmation of his own inadequacies, to which Thomas quips that he is here for that. The next day, Thomas asks his father out to lunch, surprising him. During lunch, he tells Thomas to leave his place in the Lower East Side and live closer to them. Ethan feels like he intentionally moved away from them, and he finds it hurtful. Thomas doesn't reply to his request and instead asks about his mother, and when Ethan says she's better, Thomas reminds him that his mother's condition is delicate and can change any time. Ignoring him, Ethan offers to pay for his rent, and again, Thomas doesn't answer. Before they part ways, Ethan informs his son that he set an appointment for him with a career counselor. As Ethan is about to get in a cab, Thomas tries telling him that he knows about his affair but decides against it. When Ethan goes back home, he visits Gerald and tells him about his father's affair. Gerald asks him if he will confront his father about it but Thomas says he won't because his father doesn't like him much. He adds that his mother is a depressive bipolar who quickly unravels when someone or something threatens their family. 
Telling her about his father's affair will destroy her, but instead of commenting on what Thomas is saying, Gerald tells him to furnish his place and that he lives in Brooklyn. Thomas is surprised that Gerald has two apartments, and Gerald casually says he's rich. As Thomas continues to talk about his father, Gerald asks him what he wants in life. After considering Gerald's question, Thomas says he wants to be better than his parents. When Ethan had his family, he ignored Thomas's love for writing. Ethan was afraid that his son would live a life of rejections, so Thomas kept his writing to himself. As Thomas grew older, the bond between him and his mother intensified, making Ethan feel like an outsider. However, things had changed when he met Joanna. One day, Thomas decided to check if his father will meet his mistress again, so he and Mimi wait for him outside his office building. As they do, Joanna comes out of the door, surprising them. Without thinking, Thomas follows Joanna, making sure to keep his distance. He follows her on a train, then to a restaurant, and Thomas can't deny that she really is beautiful. After finding out where she lives, Thomas finally goes home. When Gerald learns about what Thomas did, he asks the young man what exactly he wants to accomplish. Thomas quickly says he wants to tell Joanna to stop meeting his father, so Gerald urges him just to do it. Unfortunately, Thomas hasn't built up the courage yet, so he settles with stalking her in the meantime. However, Gerald believes Thomas wants something else aside from protecting his mother. To him, Thomas wants something more provocative. Thomas decides to follow Joanna again, and he is surprised to find out that Joanna knows him. Joanna recognizes him from his picture on Ethan's desk, and when she invites him to grab something to eat, Thomas accepts. As they sit in a cafe, Thomas learns that she's a freelance editor, who sometimes works with his father, and that she's been seeing Ethan for more than a year already. Fearing for his mother's mental health, Thomas demands to know why she's seeing a married man and asks if she loves his father, but Joanna evades the question. Thomas wants to know if she thinks she can steal his father from his mother, and Joanna simply says that Judith may already be giving Ethan to her without realizing it. As Ethan gets confused, Joanna states that Thomas is craving something without realizing it, and that is to sleep with her. At Judith and Ethan's house, Thomas's mother overreacts over a missing photograph, Upset, she decides to smoke even though she's not supposed to, then reminds Thomas that she'll be lost without him. When Thomas confronts Joanna for the second time, he straight up tells her to stop seeing his father. He believes that Joanna can have any man in the city. But when Joanna asks if she can have him, Thomas doesn't answer and uses his mother's fragile state as an excuse instead. Joanna subtly teases Thomas, making him feel as if he's flirting with her, before leaving. When Ethan once mentioned to Joanna that he's leaving Judith, she thought he wasn't serious. However, the idea has stayed in her head, suddenly making her needy. Now, Joanna thinks that Thomas's attention is the remedy to her rattled confidence. Meanwhile, Thomas recounts to Gerald his confrontation with Joanna. Gerald feels like it's pointless for Thomas to be in contact with Joanna, implying that he simply likes dealing with her. Thomas doesn't want to admit it, but after Gerald keeps pressing him, he finally confesses that he wants to sleep with her. At a wedding reception, Thomas and Mimi bump into Joanna, who's with another man. Thomas can't help but stare at her, and when Joanna approaches him, she tells him that she's not dating the man she's with. As they talk, Thomas insults Joanna, saying her date probably paid for her whole evening. Offended, Joanna walks out, but Thomas quickly follows her to apologize. Still pissed, Joanna pulls Thomas aside and tells him her date is gay. She then claims that he doesn't know how the world truly works, but Thomas begs to, to prove that he isn't an innocent child, he gives a vivid rundown of how she probably seduced his father. As Joanna is about to say something, Thomas suddenly kisses her. Instead of getting mad, Joanna kisses him back, and they start making out. Thomas then goes back to the party, acting like nothing happened before telling Mimi they should leave. Thomas continues to see Joanna and sleeps with her, while Mimi starts noticing Thomas's absence. As Thomas gets more comfortable being with Joanna, he confesses that he wanted to write. He used to write all sorts of letters when he was a child, 
and when he came up with a collection of essays, he showed it to his father, who found it to be nothing special, just serviceable. Joanna feels terrible for him, and when she says she wants to read his letters, Thomas responds that he threw them away. Later on, Thomas shows one of his works to Gerald, and he thinks Thomas has talent. He then tells him he thinks about Joanna all the time, and that maybe it's love, but Gerald says love is hard to determine. When asked if he's ever been in love, Gerald explains that he fell in love with his friend's girl. They had a connection, but it was a mess, so he left. Gerald then borrows Thomas's essays, and before he goes, Thomas proudly tells him that, as of the moment, he doesn't feel guilty about Joanna. One time, while Gerald is away, Thomas goes to his apartment to retrieve his essays. After seeing no signs of Gerald, he finds a manuscript written by Julian Stellars called The Only Living Boy in New York. Despite his curiosity, Thomas doesn't read it and leaves. When he finds Gerald, Thomas confronts him about his secret identity, claiming that he's a famous author who has published twelve books. Thomas then tells Gerald that he knows he's an alcoholic who spends most afternoons drinking in the Brooklyn Inn. As Thomas sits beside Gerald, he feels happy after realizing that it was a professional opinion when Gerald said he had talent. However, he also feels like he doesn't know anything about the world, but Gerald disagrees, reminding Thomas that he slept with his father's mistress. When Thomas asks Gerald if he's the only living boy in New York, Gerald tells him that he is. Thomas goes to Joanna's house one evening to give her his essays, but she isn't there. As he is about to go home, he calls Joanna to tell her he dropped by her place, but he is surprised to see her walking with his father. Curious, Thomas follows them as they enter a restaurant, and upon seeing the two being sweet to each other, Thomas leaves. When he meets Mimi later that night, Mimi asks him if he slept with Joanna, but Thomas denies it. After making love with Joanna, Thomas insists she stop seeing Ethan, but Joanna doesn't care about what he wants. Upset that Joanna won't listen to him, Thomas asks about her childhood instead. When he asks what her father does, Joanna reveals that her father took his life. Feeling sorry for her, Thomas changes the subject and asks why she sleeps with him and what she likes about him. Joanna says she likes him and his innocence, but when Thomas asks if she was ever innocent, Joanna says she forgot. Joanna questions why he's with someone not as pure as her and Thomas simply tells her he cares about her. As they stare into each other's eyes, Joanna says she doesn't care about anyone. However, she knows that that's a lie, as she cares about Ethan and Thomas. Thomas meets Gerald later on and asks him why he's writing about him. While smoking his tobacco, Gerald says he left his house and got the apartment to write about something new but failed. When he met Thomas, he found his story interesting and started writing about him. Letting the subject go, Thomas invites Gerald to his father's party for his publishing house's anniversary, but Gerald declines. As Thomas and Mimi go to the party together, she tells Thomas that she broke up with her boyfriend. Thomas seems uninterested in the news, disappointing Mimi. At the party, Thomas sees Gerald by the bar and approaches him. Thomas points to Judith and Mimi, and Gerald says his mother is beautiful. Thomas then goes to his mother and tells her there's someone he wants her to meet. But when they go to the bar, Gerald is already gone. On the rooftop, Gerald approaches Joanna and says he knows her very well. Seeing that Joanna is confused, Gerald subtly warns her not to break Thomas's heart, making her feel uncomfortable. Joanna then leaves, and as she goes back to the party, she just walks past Thomas. Worried, Thomas quickly follows her and once he catches up to Joanna, she tells him they should stop seeing each other. She breaks the news that Ethan proposed to her, and she accepted. Angry, Thomas tells her that his father is just going through a crisis and that he will never let him leave his mother. Joanna tries reasoning with him, saying she's just saving Judith from the weight of a dead marriage, but Thomas won't hear her out. Upset, Thomas says he'll tell his father about them and walks away with Joanna trying to stop him. However, Thomas suddenly changes his mind and leaves the party. Mimi follows Thomas as he goes home. Under the rain, she confesses that she broke up with her boyfriend because she got into Croatia, and she wants Thomas to come with her. Instead of accepting Mimi's invitation, 
Thomas confesses that he slept with Joanna and he thought he was in love with her, but Mimi doesn't believe him. When Thomas insists he's telling the truth, Mimi walks away, and even with Thomas's apologies, Mimi doesn't care anymore. Mimi leaves in a car, and when Thomas finally gets to his parents' house, he lies down in bed and immediately falls asleep. The following morning, Judith is surprised to see that Thomas has spent the night there. She wonders if Thomas has a problem, and he tells his mother that things got messy and he wants to bail. Concerned, Judith tells him that the only way out is through, and Thomas agrees with her. He then goes to his father's office, where he bumps into Joanna. The two race to Ethan's office, and when Thomas gets there first, he immediately tries to confess about Joanna. When Joanna arrives, she tries to stop Thomas from talking, and in the middle of it all, Ethan gets confused to learn that his son and mistress know each other, determined to get everything out of his chest. Thomas admits that he slept with Joanna more than once. This mortifies Joanna, and she turns around as she cries, while Ethan starts getting emotional too. Suddenly, Ethan attacks Thomas, asserting that he has no idea how much he's done for him. Ethan cries as he touches Joanna, and when it gets too overwhelming for him, he leaves. Alone with Thomas in Ethan's office, Joanna tells him she really loves his father. Before going, Joanna shows Thomas a newspaper clipping of him while playing tennis with Gerald in the crowd. Thomas goes to Gerald's apartment to confront the man, but Gerald isn't there. When he sees the ashtray from Brooklyn Inn, Thomas immediately heads there and finds Gerald drinking in the bar. When Thomas shows him the newspaper clipping, Gerald admits that he's Thomas's biological father. When Ethan and Judith found out that Ethan's infertile, they asked for Gerald's help, and he happily obliged. Gerald admits to falling in love with Judith, but after she gave birth to Thomas, Gerald decided not to complicate things and just watch his son from afar. Gerald says he was desperate to connect with him and nurture his talent, but he never did. After that, Gerald turned his story into his next book, and as Thomas listens to his father, he hugs Gerald until he cries. Thomas returns to his parents' house and learns that his mother already knows about everything. He then starts talking about Gerald, saying he knows she's been in love with him for the last twenty-five years. Judith is confused as to how Thomas knew about it, and Thomas says Gerald told him about their story himself. Guilty, Judith tells Thomas it was her idea not to say anything about his birth father, and Thomas understands. With their secrets finally out in the open, Judith asks about Gerald's welfare, and Thomas happily answers her. After some time, Thomas is at the library he works in, and there, he reads his letter of rejection from a publishing company. Ethan suddenly shows up, and after he gets a copy of Gerald's book, Thomas expresses his admiration for him for not running away. They then do some catching up in the park, where Thomas tells Ethan that Mimi has finally moved to Croatia. When Thomas asks if he still speaks with Joanna, Ethan says he doesn't anymore. He then asks about Judith, and Thomas is delighted to tell him that she's finally quit smoking and started writing for R to News again. Thomas also adds that Judith has a date later in the evening, and Ethan says that's good for her. After they part ways, Thomas goes to Gerald's book reading event, where he sees his mother happily listening to the man she loves. Subscribe to watch more videos like this turn on notifications, and leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.